we're going to take a graphical approach to limits in order to discuss discontinuities and jumps in graphs. For the first example, I have a nice curve. It's a continuous curve. There's no missing pieces. There's no weird jumps going on. And we can evaluate the limit of these nice continuous curves really easily. And that is if the limit as x approaches a of f of x should just be equal to f of a in these circumstances. So if we plug in a into our function, then the value we get is just f of a. And if x is approaching from the left or whether x is approaching from the right, we will see that, of course, f of x will get closer to f of a and eventually it will just equal f of a. So that's a really nice condition when it's continuous. But what about when a graph is discontinuous? So here I have a function g of x, and it has two gaps in it. It has a gap at a and it has a gap at c. But it's also defined on a and c. So up here, if we take g of a, it just happens to be equal to 4. And if we take g of c, so we plug in the c value, we also get that it just happens to be equal to 4. So this is one of those cases where there's a discontinuity, and then that one point is somewhere else. So how does this affect the limit? Well, remember, the limit as x approaches a of g of x, we have to approach a from the left and from the right, and if those values are equal, then that is our limit. So let's start with a and let's approach it from the left and the right. So we're going to take some x here, and we'll put it on our curve, and we're going to get closer and closer to a. And we're going to take it from the right, and then we're also going to get closer and closer to a with it. And what do we notice about this? Well, if we take x from the left or from the right and we approach a, it gets closer and closer to 2. So this means that the limit as x goes to a of g of x is equal to 2. And of course, this is not the same here as g of a, which is equal to 4. So in this circumstance, we can't just plug a into our g of x function in order to get the limit. And this is a really important notion because what, is this, what this is saying is that this graph is not continuous. The limit is somewhere else than the point is defined. So this is just an important thing to take note of when you're doing piecewise functions, which I'll introduce at the end of the video, as well as if you're doing these graphical limits. So let's do the limit as x approaches b of g of x. Well, with b, we have something really nice going on because it's continuous at this point. There's no gap. So as x approaches b of g of x, this is equal to something like, I don't know, maybe let's say 3.3. Let's put it's roughly equal to 3.3 because I didn't draw the graph very specifically, but it's just this point here. When you approach it from the left and the right, it's the same. It's even defined on that curve. So we could even say that in this case, it is just equal to g of b. So because it's continuous, we can just put b into g of x. And of course, we only know it's continuous because we have the graph here. We'll discuss continuity in a later video uh, more formally. What about the limit as x approaches c of g of x? I'm sure by now you can do this on your own. So tell me what it is. Well, from the left, let's take a point on the left. Let's take a point on the right. Let's get closer and closer to c. And what do we see? Well. If we take it from the left and the right, it approaches 3, even though it's defined g of c as 4. So once again, this is not just equal to g of c because there is a discontinuity there. So hopefully this example has shown you discontinuities. Now there's one more thing that can happen, which we'll just call jumps. And these are just like discontinuities. In fact, they are discontinuities but they look a little bit different. So let's take a look at a here. And I don't have anything evaluating a, but from the left, if we approach a, we just hit one. But from the right, if we approach a, 
we get three. But the interesting thing here is that, well, in this case, if we just take h of a, then this is also equal to three. So the right-hand limit is equal to the function evaluated at a, but the left-hand limit is equal to one. So we say that there's no limit as x approaches a for h of x. But let's take a look at b. So as x approaches b, let's do from the right side first. So the limit as x approaches b from the right of h of x, well, let's put a point down here. This is our x. Oh, it's on this curve, which is negative. As it approaches b, it approaches the value negative 1. So when we come from the right, it approaches negative 1. Now, what about the limit as x goes to b from the left? Well, let's take x here. Where is this on the curve? It's all the way up here above 2. And let's tend towards b. Now, what happens from the left? Well, here it tends towards the value 2. So now we know that the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit are not equal. Therefore, the limit as x approaches b of our curve, h of x, just does not exist. There is no limit. But also, let's evaluate b. So what is h of b? Well, if we just plug in b, we see that this point here exists at 1. So h of b is just 1. So here's a case where the left-hand limit is not equal to the right-hand limit, and that's not even equal to where the point is evaluated at all. And this is very different from a here, where we have that h of a is equal to the limit as x approaches a from the right side of h of x. But then when we approach from the left side, it is only equal to 1, so there is no limit. So those are discontinuities and jumps. Now, I've just given you curves that are drawn and just these functions that aren't defined, but we can do these piecewise functions that are defined. And here's a good example of a question you would get on an exam. This is a much simplified version of a question you get on an exam, but you get something in this format. So I have f of x is equal to, and it's equal to two different things depending on the value of x. It's equal to 1 minus x if x is greater or equal to 0. But if x is less than 0, f of x is equal to negative x. So my question is, what's the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x? Well, let's draw this graphically first. So graphically, if we have x greater or equal to 0, so let's start with x equals 0. If x equals 0, then we have 1 minus x. So 1 minus 0 is just equal to 1. And this is less than, or sorry, this is x greater than or equal to 0. So this is a filled in point. What if x is equal to 1? Well, then 1 minus 1 is just 0. And we can see this is just going to be a straight line starting at y equals 1 all the way down to negative infinity. What if x is less than 0? So if x, let's say, is negative 1, so if x is negative 1, then negative x would be negative negative 1, which is positive 1. So at negative 1, we would get positive 1. Now, what happens as x goes to 0 from this side? Well, what is negative 0? Negative 0 is just 0. But this is not a filled in point, because this is just strictly less than 0. So our second function here is just going to start at 0 and tend to infinity by going x in the negative direction. So this is what our graph looks like. And if we just take a look at the graph, we can see here that as x approaches 0, there's no limit, because as it approaches from the left, it goes to 0, and as it approaches from the right, it goes to 1. So really, this limit does not exist. But how do we check algebraically? Well, algebraically, if we take the limit as x goes to 0 from the right, which function do we use? Well, from the right means x is positive, so we use this 1 minus x function. So this is the limit as x goes to 0 from the right of 1 minus x, we can just plug 0 in there, so this will be 1 minus 0, which is equal to 1. But now, what if we do x 
goes to zero from the left. Well, then we use this negative x in our piecewise function. So the limit as x goes to zero from the left, we're just looking at the function negative x, which is equal to negative zero, which is just zero. So we can see algebraically as well that these left and right hand limits are not the same. Therefore, there is no limit. So with piecewise functions, usually they're not simple enough to graph. Instead, we have to take a look at when is it approaching from the right? When is it approaching from the left? And which function do I use? In fact, what if in this case, this was x greater than zero, x less than or equal to zero. And instead I said, it's equal to 32 when x is equal to zero. Well, in this case, our limits don't change at all because as x approaches from the right, we would use one minus x. And as x approaches from the left, we'd use negative x. When would we ever use that x equals zero? Well, we would only do that for plotting a point or checking for continuity. However, this doesn't change the limits here. Since we're never really looking for a point when x is equal to zero, we're just interested in how x approaches zero from either sides. So that's a nice graphical look at limits. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them.